Welcome back to Betfair Hollywood Park as it is opening day for the 2012 autumn meeting, a meeting that stretches through the turf festival through Thanksgiving. And day number one looks pretty good. An eight race card on tap. A little bit of rain coming in, but that didn't damper any of the enthusiasm as we welcome you back to the Inglewood Oval. Let's take a look at the field for race number one as we start the day with a $10,000 claimer. Three year old Phillies going six furlongs on the main track. And in the first race of the autumn meeting here at Betfair Hollywood Park, the favorite would come from the Jeff Mullins barn, the number four, Attack the Jack. This filly had won three of four here at Betfair Hollywood Park on the cushion track, and despite the fact that she was beaten 30 lengths last time out at Santa Anita, this is where the wagering public would take their money. Cupid's Bling, the five for Doug O'Neill and Agapito Delgadillo would take a little attention as well, as did Natalie's Academy. That's how they lined up. Vic Stoffer had the call. They're at the post. They're off. Attack the Jack, hard sent by Tyler Bays, makes a short lead early from Studio City in the center. Natalie's Academy and Cupid's Bling are close up. Real Dream is fifth at the rail, and the trailer is Warren Samantha. No easy lead for the big favorite, Attack the Jack. Three quarters of a length in front of a threesome that come after her. Natalie's Academy in the red cap up into second. Cupid's Bling three deep in third, and to the outside, and Studio City fourth and about two from the front now. She'll be in the four path all the way around the far turn. Real Dream is still fifth at the rail and four from the lead, and it's six back to Warren's Samantha. Midway on the far turn, Attack the Jack and Natalie's Academy, and they are even to the quarter pole. Attack the Jack inside, Natalie's Academy outside, and Natalie has put a neck in front. Real Dream looms in behind those two. Red cap, and within a length and a half of the lead, Cupid's Bling those two shoulder to shoulder natalie's academy has taken over the lead attack the jack has backed out real dream is the danger as is cupid's bling it's down to these three natalie's academy real dream between horses cupid's bling to the outside real dream between horses cupid's bling now down to those two real dream just in front Real Dream wanted by a long head. Close for second. I think it's Cupid's bling. Natalie's Academy right there. Warren's Samantha finished fourth. Juan Hernandez would kick off the meet with a bang here. $49.80 the return on a mere $2 wager to win on Real Dream. So a huge upset in the opener. And the prices would be outstanding as well. Hats off to Linda Micus. This three-year-old filly by Cat Dreams is out of the Apollo Mare, another variety. Owned by Carlo Fisco, bred by Lee Gray. Here in sunny California, Real Dream at $49. Broke a lot of people in the first leg of the pick five. But the pick four would get underway in race number two. An $8,000 claiming event for Phillies and Mares three and up to go a mile and a 16th on the main track. And Living Our Dream, the number two horse, would go postward as your favorite. And there was a lot to like about this mare. Even though she was beaten 19 lengths last time out, she had won before for Eddie Truman. He reclaimed her. And another one who loved the surface at Bet Bear Hollywood Park. And with Rafael Bejarano climbing aboard, the wagering public saw fit to make this mare the favorite at post time. Aaron Grider would be aboard V for Bob Hess just to her inside. And another one that took a little bit of attention was Musical Grace for Rafael Bercera. That's how they lined up. Vic Stoffer brought you the call. They're at the post. They're off. Musical Grace got a couple of taps of the whip to try to make the lead. There's others quick as her, though. Plaza is one of them, and these two now set off. V moves through at the rail. Those will be the three quickest. Then comes Living Our Dream, Red Moon Cat, and a three-wide she's key. And my friend Gail has dropped over to the rail, saved some ground to the back stretch from the outside post. They turn into the backside, and Plaza Rita just quicker than Musical Grace. So Plaza Rita's the leader by a half length from Musical Grace, who's second. Then it's a lineup of three with V at the rail, Red Moon Cat between horses, and she's key three deep. They're all about two from the front. My friend Gail continues to track from the inside position. Second to last and four and a half off the lead and living our dream is outside of her. There's five furlongs less than that. Now left to run as they run past the half mile pole. 
Plaza Rita and a closer Musical Grace. Plaza Rita only leads by a neck. Musical Grace is second by a length and a half to She's Key Three Deep and V at the Rail. Red Moon Cat is the first one to drop out, passed by my friend Gail, and the trailer is still living our dream. Three furlongs from the money, two by two to the quarter pole, and the leader is Plaza Rita, just now a half ahead in front of Musical Grace in second. She's Key and V are still in striking position, if good enough, two from the front. My friend Gail continues to save all the ground, living our dream within four of the lead. And and Red Moon Cat is gone, top of the stretch, absolutely wide open. Musical Grace takes a short lead. My friend Gail dives through at the rail. She's key in the middle of the track, and V, and it's V who puts her white blinkers in front. V has taken over the lead, a length in front of She's Key and my friend Gail, but it's V to the wire, and she looks like she's got it. It's V in front. V won by a length, very close for a second. I think it's She's Key over my friend Gail. Musical Grace finished fourth. The number one horse, V, would get the victory in race number two. And hats off to jockey Aaron Greider as he sat the pocket trip with this five-year-old mare by Loa de Zanimo. Bob has had to be happy with the way this jockey got her around the racetrack. A little wide turning for home as it was a wide open affair turning for home. But that three-wide move proved to be all it took to get it done. There was a dead heat for second. The number six and the number seven, Chesky and my friend Gail with dead heat, hence the multiple payouts in the exacta and trifecta and superfecta. Those superfecta payouts, though, even though they were split, still very nice. 1,426 one way and 1,271 the other. So race number two would go to V in a final clocking of 147 and two. The early double in the books. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back and take a look at race number three. Best Fair Hollywood Park opens its autumn meet on Thursday, November 8th, and what a meet it will be! Opening week brings world-class racing and special promotions like the $5,000 Autumn Handicapping Challenge starting November 9th and the $2,500 Show Me the Money Contest on November 10th. Join us this week for BS the Friday's Happy Hours from 2 to 4 featuring drink specials, Mexican munchies, and a drawing for a $100 wagering voucher. A great time is waiting for you opening week at Best Fair Hollywood Park. Welcome back. The third race at Betfair Hollywood Park would be the first turf event of the meeting and a nice race lined up. Kettlecorn would be the headliner. This five-year-old horse by Candy Ride was last seen taking on obviously on the turf at Santa Anita, but this horse competed in the Hollywood Gold Cup earlier this summer here at Betfair Hollywood Park, finishing third to Game On Dude. Four of the five runners in the field have a grade one race within their last five starts. So some very accomplished and talented horses. And you would think that they were using this allowance today to build toward bigger and better things down the line here in the fall meeting at Bet Bear Hollywood Park. That's how they lined up. Let's see how they ran. They're up. Wow, Acadian caught a flyer and goes right for the front. However, Oligarch is going to run alongside, and Martin Garcia is not going to try to go that fast, so he'll concede the lead on Acadian, and Oligarch leads. He's two in front of Acadian, who had that beautiful start. 31st Street away in third, then Kettlecorn at the rail, and Quindici Man is the trailer as they go to the back stretch, and Oligarch is aggressive. Look at him go. Oligarch has opened up a solid lead now. He's three and a half in front of Acadian, who's content to track him from second. It's two lengths to 31st Street in the pink blinkers. He's got about five lengths to make up. Kettlecorn is at the rail and traveling well enough. Kettlecorn is second to last and seven off the lead. Just outside of him, Quindici Man, they run up the back stretch. Oligarch is uncontested on that lead, and he leads now by two and a half lengths. Acadian has cut a length off the leader's margin as they pass the half mile marker. 31st Street continues to track. Kettlecorn's closer. He's moving through at the rail. About to be a joint third now is Kettlecorn, and he's about four from the front. And Quindici Man is the trailer. They leave the back stretch. Oligarch, three furlongs from the money. He continues to lead with Acadian tracking intently in second. Now Acadian is asked to go after the front runner, and he draws within a length and a quarter of the lead. Meanwhile, Kettlecorn is riding the rail, and Kettlecorn's got a good chance from there. He's two off the lead. 31st Street and Quindici Man, top of the stretch. Oligarch is the leader. Kettle Corn, Acadian trying to keep him in, but he can't, and Kettle Corn muscles his way through between horses. They still have yet to catch Oligarch. Oligarch just in front. Kettle Corn trying to get him on the money. Acadian is three deep. Kettle Corn, Acadian, Kettle Corn wins. Kettle Corn beat Acadian by a head. It's close for third, 31st Street, and Oligarch. 
despite a nice race from Oligark, who got the lead early on, looked like he was going to be able to go on with it. But when they turned for home, it was just a little too much kettle corn. This horse, very gain. It was hard fought, but Garrett Gomez gets him to the wire for trainer John Sadler and the CRK stable. This horse by Candy Ride out of the little ET mare, something beautiful. Got the job done today as your favorite in race number three. You can rest assured you'll see kettle corn down the line in some bigger stakes racing action. Final clocking for the third race, 141 and three. Moving on to race number four, we had a maiden claiming event for two-year-old fillies. Six and a half furlongs the distance, and the favorite was the number two, She's a Go Girl. This filly had made three starts for Adam Kitchingman, and that was the most experience of anybody in the field other than Kevin's Cool Cat, another filly who also had three starts under her belt. Diamond Flush would get a little attention for Bob Hess, a second-time starter that was promising in her debut when finishing fifth in a field of 11. That's how they lined up for race number four here at Betfair Hollywood Park. Vic had the call. They're at the post. And they're off. She's a go girl and a Jane's a ship break. Well, Agent Scully actually broke last, but now moves through between horses and grabs second. Then comes Kavala at the rail, Spooky Lady four deep, and Kevin's cool cat just inside of her. The trailer is Diamond to Flush. She's a go girl up the back stretch, a length and a quarter in front of Agent Scully, who's second by a half length. Kavala's at the rail, moving up to be a joint second now, and about a length and a half off the lead. Jane's ship in the black going to be three wide, and Spooky Lady in the pink four wide, leaving the back stretch. But Spooky Lady's on the move. Now she's a joint second and moving up. Kevin's Cool Cat has five and a half to make up, and then seven lengths last to Diamond to Flush. They round the far turn. She's a go girl, and a fresh challenge from Spooky Lady. And now these two will match strides at the quarter pole. She's a go girl, half ahead in front of Spooky Lady, who is traveling nicely outside of her. And Spooky Lady is coming, calling for that lead outside of She's a Go Girl, even past mid stretch. She's a go girl inside. Spooky Lady outside, and they are shoulder to shoulder to throw down for the final 16th. Spooky Lady now inches to the lead. Spooky Lady, She's a Go Girl does her best. It's second best to the winner, Spooky Lady. Spooky Lady won by a length and three quarters in the end. She's a go girl. Good second. Kavala third. Close for fourth. Well, it was the first time starter from Julio Canani, Spooky Lady, who would get the score in the fourth race today. This filly by Yes It's True was live on the tilt board going into the gate at five to two. You'd actually get three to one when all was said and done in the wagering. But a promising debut, and she's certainly one to look at. The next time she passes the entry box, she'll be facing winners, and you wouldn't be surprised to see her right back in the winner's circle. And the winner will be making a start for another bar next time out, as she was claimed by John Sadler. Final time of the fourth race, 118 and 2. The first half of the card in the books, we're going to take another break. When we return, we'll start talking about the late pick four at Betfair Hollywood Park. Betfair Hollywood Park opens its autumn meet on Thursday, November 8th, and what a meet it will be! Opening week brings world-class racing and special promotions like the $5,000 Autumn Handicapping Challenge starting November 9th and the $2,500 Show Me the Money Contest on November 10th. Join us this meet for BS the Friday's happy hours from 2 to 4 featuring drink specials, Mexican munchies, and a drawing for a $100 wagering voucher. A great time is waiting for you opening week at Betfair Hollywood Park. Welcome back as we start the late pick four here at Betfair Hollywood Park. Phillies and Mares going a mile into 16th on the turf course. $25,000 claiming event. And your favorite at post time was the number six horse, Collating Lady, with Tyler Bays in the irons. This filly was first off the claim for Vladimir Sarin, and he's been red hot with that move. That's how they lined up. Let's see how they ran. Vic had the call. They're off. Include the cat and Leica break well. Bright-eyed and bushy tail breaks. Best stone goes for the front. Bonita Sonia Dora away in fourth. Collating Lady and Last Sting are next. Elegance mid-pack and now moves up to third. Elegant will be three wide early. Then comes Ruffled Feathers and the early trailer is Silix Valley. 
They run to the back stretch. Bright eyed and bushy tail is the leader. Three quarters of a length from Bonita Sonador, who comes to put some pressure on in second. Include the cat gets a good snug position. Third at the rail and less than two from the front. Elegant still three deep, just outside of Include the Cat. Then it's a lineup of three, all about three and a half off the lead. Last sting between horses. Collating Lady three deep in the blue cap and Leica at the rail. Then it's five or six back to the veteran California bred mare ruffled feathers and three and a half more to Silix Valley as they run up the back stretch at the half mile marker. Bonita Sonador and Bright Eyed and Bushy Tail. Pretty much even. Bright Eyed and Bushy Tail half a head in front. Elegant is in good striking position. She's about to join the front runners three deep. Include the cat continues to save all the ground. She'll need racing room though as Bright Eyed and Bushy Tail is just about ready to drop back. Collating Lady in last sting. Only have two and a half to make up. Leica is four from the front. Ruffled Feathers has five to come. Silix Valley, new leader, top of the stretch. Elegant slingshots to the lead. New leader, and she'll be tough to catch. Elegant is now suddenly three lengths in front. Include the Cat is out and after her. In the center, Collating Lady, but Elegant made that move at the quarter pole, and she's still two and a half to the good. Include the Cat chases her home. It is Elegant. Yes. Elegant won by just over two. Include the cat second. Collating lady third and last sting. Finish fourth. The number nine horse Elegant would get the score in the fifth race. Owned by Hollendorfer Myers or Todaro. Ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano and trained by Jerry Hollendorfer. This five-year-old mare by Maria Zman would pick up her first win of the year, but her fourth win from 21 starts in her career. And that early pick four paying $184. The early pick five, however, $5,675. That might have been worth the play. The final clocking for that fifth race, 142 and four. And only one claim in the race, the number six coalating lady was claimed by Miguel Silva. Race number six would feature a field of two-year-olds trying to break their maiden at the $30,000 claiming level. Six and a half furlongs the distance, and when all was said and done in the wagering, it was the number nine horse, the whole deal that would go postward as your eight to five favorite. There were a number of scratches in here. The one horse, the eight horse, the 12 and the 15 all listed as scratches. The 13, 14, and 16 drawing in off the also eligibles, so a very different race than what was drawn in the entry box. And two significant changes for the number 11 Proud Bull and the number 13 10 times the trouble. Both will be racing as a gelding for the first time today. That's how they lined up. Let's see how they ran. Vic had the call. They're off. Trice up broke well. So did our smoking hero in Valley Spirit. The whole deal is close up. Ten times the trouble in Danny's birthday, son of Tokayana midfield. Then it's Proud Bull and Double D's on the tee, followed by Crazy Cozy, and the trailer is Salat Champ. Log jam up the back stretch. Valley Spirit emerges with a short lead from our smoking hero. The whole deal's on the move, and there goes the whole deal. Black cap into second on the move. Then comes Son of Tokayana between horses and Tricep three wide, and Tricep draws within a length of the lead. Danny's birthday and ten times the trouble have four lengths to make up. It's three and a half back to double D's on the T. And Proud Bull, they're both passed now from the outside by Salah Champ, who's moving up. Here's Salah Champ in the yellow, and he's passing horses. Could be heard from late. Now five off the lead at the quarter pole. Crazy Cozy is the trailer, and it's joint leaders at the top of the stretch. Trice up and the whole deal. Trice up is outside. The whole deal is at the rail. Three and a half back to Son of Tokayana. Salat Champ's about to take third, and he continues to close. However, the whole deal has put away Tricep, and he looks like he's got it. The whole deal is now three in front. Tricep is second. He'll try to hold off Salat Champ. Looks like Salat will get second. He will not catch the whole deal. The whole deal won by almost three. Salat Champ did get second. Tricep third, and Double D's on the tee was fourth. And the favorite did not disappoint today in the sixth race. Getting the job done at odds of eight to five, the whole deal would pick up that maiden victory in career start number six. Although it was only his fourth try against maidens, Steve Knapp had thrown this horse in against grade one company twice in the Del Mar Futurity and the front runner. Edwin Maldonado was in the irons for the winning ride for owner Paula Dean. His two-year-old colt is by Holy Bull out of the half-term mare tradition of time. Final clocking for this race was 118 and one. Six races down, we just have two left to talk about, and we'll have those for you right after this break.
Betfair Hollywood Park opens its autumn meet on Thursday, November 8th, and what a meet it will be! Opening week brings world-class racing and special promotions like the $5,000 Autumn Handicapping Challenge starting November 9th and the $2,500 Show Me the Money Contest on November 10th. Join us this week for Fiesta Friday's Happy Hours from 2 to 4 featuring drink specials, Mexican munchies, and a drawing for a $100 wagering voucher. A great time is waiting for you opening week at Betfair Hollywood Park. Welcome back to Betfair Hollywood Park. The seventh race, a nice optional claiming event here. $25,000 price tag for state breads or the non-winner of one other than condition would apply. Six furlongs a distance and a field of 11 scratched down to a field of 10 with the defection of the number eight horse, Swiss Tart. Two horses would go postward at odds of two to one. The number seven slightly favored over the nine. So my slew would be your favorite at post time. Vic Stoffer had the call. They're at the post. They're off. Classic Bobby, Master Chef, Jeffrey's Group, Cabo Chico in three vases. Cabo Chico is fastest and rides the rail to the lead. My Slew's Sun's Out and Candy's Sunrise all join Mint Humor. They make up the second flight. And Doug and Bill is the trailer up the back stretch with Cabo Chico now in charge. Cabo Chico to the far turn, a two-length lead over Classic Bobby in second. Three Vases joins Bobby from the inside and Master Chef from the outside. And now Classic Bobby is fourth as Three Vases takes second and Master Chef takes third. It's two lengths, too. My Slew, who rides the rail, Jeffrey's Groove, three deep and four from the front. Mint Humor, Sun's Out, and Candy's Sunrise all have six to come. And Doug and Bill's at the back of the pack, and here comes... The new leader, and it's three vases at the top of the stretch. Three vases, now two lengths in front. Master Chef has a chance from the outside. He takes over second, and here comes Master Chef trying to gun down three vases. Three vases, Master Chef alongside. Master Chef, late run. Doug and Bill from nowhere. Master Chef wins. Master Chef gives Holly Hollendorfer two wins on the day. It ended up very close for second between a flying Doug and Bill and three vases, and my slew finished fourth. Master Chef would make it back to back wins, and this was a shrewd reclaim by Jerry Hollendorfer. This gelding had made his way through the Dan Blacker, Peter Miller, and Mark Glattbarns, but Hollendorfer, his original trainer, would claim him back last time out and bring him to the winner's circle today. Joe Talamo was up, this one owned by Hollendorfer or Todaro, a gelded son of Vronsky out of the perfect mandate mare, grilled to perfection, bred by Old English Rancho right here in sunny California. And some nice prices in this race, despite the fact that you had just a two to one shot winning. The trifecta paid $1,300 and the superfecta paid $10,757. That has something to do with the fact that the horse who ran second, the number two, Dugan Bill, paid $45 to place. And that's why you get those big, big payouts in the exotic wagers. Final clocking for race number seven was 111 and two. That brings us to the eighth and final race on the card, and we would close things out on opening day with a maiden special weight affair to go six furlongs on the turf course. This is for California bred fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. And there was a scratch of the number one horse classic journey. Saul Arias would pick up a mount here on the 11 Noeli, who did draw in off the also eligible because of that scratch. When all was said and done in the betting, it was the first time starter for Marty Jones, Copperopolis, Philly by Spitestown. A lot of buzz in the mornings about how this Philly was working, hence all the play, making her six to five. That's how they lined up. For one more time, Vic Stoffer had the call. They're at the post. They're off. Tank Array and Lady Now shows speed. Copperopolis is close up. Moving between horses is Ghostly Fever. Those four are quickest. Then comes Peppy Bali and Luxuriance. Down at the rail goes Truly Best. Slow into stride was a little unusual. And Noelli. Up the back stretch they run. And now Copperopolis takes charge. It is Copperopolis, a two length advantage from Ghostly Fever to the outside Peppy Bali. And now Peppy Bali is after Copperopolis up front. And then it's Lady Now, a length and a half to JM's Golden Legacy. Luxuriance is midfield. Tanker Ray's just alongside her. They're both about five from the front. Noelle is joined and passed by Little Unusual. And Truly Best is the trailer. And the leader is Copperopolis with Peppy Bolly right alongside. 
Copperopolis inside. Pepe Bali outside. Those two, two clear of Lady Now. Tanqueray is closing. So is Luxuriance in the second center of the racetrack. And here comes Luxuriance. And Luxuriance in the orange has taken over the front. Little unusual. Fires up late, but Luxuriance draws clear and wins. Lady Now second. Little unusual third. Luxuriance. Luxuriance won by three in the end. Lady Now was second. Little unusual third. Tanqueray fourth. And finishing fifth was Pepe Bali. In the end, it was the other first-time starter, Luxuriance, a filly who on paper for Corey Owens looked very good when working up the debut, but the workout report sold her a little bit short, and she would pay $13.40 despite the fact that she was just 7-2 to on the morning lines. This one was owned by Kevin Owens as well, and Tyler Bay's getting the win. That means in eight races, we had eight different winning jockeys. Big payouts in the nightcap. The trifecta paid over $583. The super paid $1,751. And the super high five, only six tickets hitting for $5,142. The late pick four paid $123. The pick six, $3,413. So no carryover going into day two of the autumn meeting. And the place pick all, there were two tickets returning $6,327.70. Final clocking for the nightcap, $111 flat and as of right now there are no scratches on the Friday card. That's going to wrap up day number one of the autumn meeting here at Betfair Hollywood Park. Join us again tomorrow on Friday. First post will be 1230. 1230 first post tomorrow and don't forget this weekend we have the real quiet stakes on Saturday and the sharp cat stakes on Sunday and don't forget the pick six is guaranteed at $150,000 this weekend and we're giving away a Prius for anyone who hits that pick six with a loan ticket on track. So please get in on those pick sixes, and you can see that Prius right when you walk through the front gate. For Vic Stauffer, I'm Mike Joyce. Thanks for joining us here at Betfair Hollywood Park, and we'll see you tomorrow.